What's up everybody, NFX here with another tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to talk about looping a sample. And uh, in this particular instance what I'm talking about is taking an instrument sound and looping it so that you can hold down the sound and play it uh, as long as you hold down the key or play the note. Um, what I've done is I've loaded up here in the channel settings window a uh, organ patch or an organ sample and if I hold down a key you can hear that it stops I'm still holding down the key but you can hear that it plays for a little bit uh, as long as this sample and then when the sample ends it stops now it has some red lines in there which um, are the loop points but if I turn on the loop points uh, let's take a listen You know, you can hear that click and then you can hear the sound starting over again. So the loop points aren't really set anywhere that's going to be useful uh, for making the sound um, clean if, if we're holding down the key. So what we want to do is go in and fix that. And the way we're going to do that is by right-clicking on the sample uh, display down here and selecting Edit. And what will come up is the built-in FL Studio Wave Editor. Now, it's definitely not, uh, you know, as full-featured as um, Audition or or any of the uh, other programs that are strictly, you know, uh, made for editing waves, but, uh, but it'll do the job. And what I want to do is I can see these little flags here. You can barely see them on the, on the edges, but there's an E and there's an S which means start and end and I can drag them around inside of here and set up some loop points now what I'm looking for is a repeating section that I can use as my start and stop and when I look at this waveform uh, I can see that it you know it dips right here goes back up kinda dips again and starts to go back up well this part right here we're kind of ramps up kind of looks like this part over here so to me that's a good target of where I can put a start and a and an end point so what I'll do is I'll move the end point <clears throat> right here to about where the bottom of this this sound starts to ramp up and I'll put the starting point right here which is where the sound starts to ramp up and the closer um, your starting and end point are as far as the uh, the sound goes the better um, because you want the you want the sound to be smooth when it when the loop when the sample's playing it's playing in this direction here and then what you want is for when it reaches the end point it'll jump back to the start point and keep on playing so because we know that this area looks like this area it makes um, a logical sense that if we loop back over here it's just going to play again and sound pretty clean at least that's what our hope is. Uh, but now what I'll do is I'll tell uh, this thing to play the loop point by clicking this button here which says uh, loop the sound and then this one which says play just the loop part of the sound. So let's hear what that sounds like. Okay, so we can hear there's a click. And this sound is, is loud, so I'm going to have to turn it off when I'm talking. But you can hear there's a click every time it comes back around, and we want to get rid of that. So the way we're going to do that is by zooming in first on the starting point. And what we're doing is we're going to zoom in as far as we can, and there's as far as we can get in there. And then we're going to look for a part of the sample that, um, that crosses over a zero mark. A zero mark, in this case, we're looking at a left and right audio. So each one has their own zero mark and the zero mark is this line right here for one side of the sample and then this line right here for another side of the sample. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for a place where the the sample is on an upswing like for example right here. I can see that the sample on top is it just dipped and it's on an upswing and I want to catch it right on that on that line on that zero marker line. Now down here 
I can see that my sample is different. It doesn't, it's not on an upswing. It's actually kind of on a little peak right at the line and then it's coming down. So this may not be a good, uh, section unless I can find something that, that matches in the other, uh, loop point, which, which I'm going to look for. So let me zoom back out and zoom into the end point and I'll zoom in again as far as I can. And because I've done this a few times, I can actually see a point that might work uh, right here. In other words, here I can see the top part is on an upswing. It dipped and it's going up. And down here, it looks almost exactly like the, uh, the other part where it just kind of peaks and then dips down. So that's a very good candidate uh, for a loop point because they're very close to each other. So now I'm going to play the loop again, and let's see if there's a click in, in the uh, sound. Okay, I can hear a very minor click in there. It's a lot less than before, but in order to just completely get rid of it, what I'm going to do is uh, just keep zooming in as far as I can on, on one of the points. It could be either the start point or the end point. And I'll move it to the middle here so we can see a little better. Uh, and then I'm going to play the sound. And as the sound's playing, I'm going to move this slider back and forth until I find the spot where it doesn't click anymore. Okay, so I found it. Now I'm going to save the file. And when I exit, it's going to put my loop points in automatically for me. Now if I hold down a key, you can hear I can just hold that key down as long as I want, and it'll just keep playing the sound nice and pure. Now, a lot of sounds uh, don't lend themselves to being looped very good. Uh, for example, you might have a, um, a uh, something that has a pluck noise to it like um, let me see if I can find one here's one if you notice this uh, this sound it doesn't really repeat you can't find a place in here where it's going to repeat because it just plucks and then it decays to, to nothing to silence so this type of a sound is not a good sound to use for repeating because no matter where you try to repeat it, your start point's going to be louder than your end point and you're always, it's always going to sound, uh, kind of funny. Now one thing that FL Studio will do though is it'll try to loop it by using this, uh, crossfade loop. And basically what that's doing is it's kind of, uh, like reversing it in a way, uh, to make it loop. I don't know the, the exact algorithm, but it's trying its best to make it loop. And you can see that now I can hold this down and it's going to work. But without the crossfade loop uh, in it, it's not going to work. There's no way I could just set two points in here and do it. I need to use this tool of the crossfade loop. So that's another way of getting a sound to sustain as long as you hold down the note. So there you have it. How to loop a sample. And uh, hopefully you uh, will use this when you need to. I know there's a lot of string libraries and string samples out there that um, you might be able to use now because you can, you can actually sustain a note as long as you want without it fading out too soon. So enjoy it. Now, I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.